size in general and then about frame running. So a whole bit about what is Parkinson's and so much interesting. So my background is in motor control, motor coordination. Um, and then since my PhD 15 years ago, I was looking at uh, people with Parkinson's and uh, just general bimanual two-handed coordination. Uh, not so much exercise, but just coordination. And since then, I've been working a lot with young people with cerebral palsy. I've worked with people who had a stroke, but not really with people with Parkinson's since then. So now I'm sort of back to, uh, yeah, I've always felt that passion about the Parkinson's research. So I'm, I'm yeah, taking points to, to look at this again. So, uh, so unfortunately, for the research side of things around frame running, uh, we haven't done it. We haven't tried it yet with two parts. That's why I'm here to, to get that going, hopefully. So the research is all about slightly different, uh, different population, different groups of people, uh, but maybe some of it uh, would transfer, would apply, so we'll have a look. So we all might be wondering what on earth this frame running is, so we'll get to that as well. Obviously, it's something quite new. Uh, so first of all, I want to be brief, because of course, uh, um, you lead the brilliant uh, Edinburgh Lecture, so you all are already aware of the importance of exercise. I'm just going to summarise a few sort of reasons why exercise is very important for people uh, with Parkinson's. It's first, uh, one of the reasons is the reduction of complications, as of course, um, the inactivity that you might see uh, with, in, well, we know from research that people with Parkinson's, uh, when at, this, at point of diagnosis, they are less active than uh, age match controls than other people with the same age without Parkinson's. Uh, and, and during a uh, while Parkinson's during the, uh, over, the, over the years following, there's always there's like a, there's a correlation, there's a relationship between people's fitness and their Parkinson's scores. That is, the neurologist assesses people and they should do all these little tests of walking and then, you know, doing all these <laughs> little, uh, little tasks for the neurologist and they score all that. Uh, also, there, there's a strong relationship with people's. Fitness. So it seems to be a good idea, but it's hard to tell, of course, what's causing what. But, but it's a good idea to, um, yeah, to, to be fit seems to be uh, an important uh, factor. And of course, because of factors to do with Parkinson, because of maybe lack of stability and uh, risk of falls, people might become less active. And that can, of course, then sec cause secondary complications. Then it's cardiovascular problems, diabetes. Uh, you know, if you do less weight-bearing osteoporosis, and then you get into this problem of, you know, it combines sort of perfect storm if you have, uh, you know, if you have posture imbalance due to Parkinson's, and then you also have weaker bones, and of course you're more likely to, to sustain fractures. Uh, another a problem that's more common in Parkinson's is depression, and that's also, we know that exercise works uh, for depression. It really... Um, yeah, helps people in that sense. Um, slowing down cognitive deterioration. No exercise helps there. Uh, there's lots of general research on that. Maintain social life. I remember from in my PhD, the one lady I spoke to who said, "Oh, I've, you know, I don't entertain as much anymore. I'm, I'm very, I can't pour a cup of tea." And she felt, you know, that was sort of, you know, she felt a little bit, um, yeah. Fortunately, she, you know, she felt limited by her condition, and so it's, you know, maintaining, so it's going out and exercising with others in a in a structured setting, in a sports setting, for might really help, isn't it? Also, maintain social life, meeting other people, and if it's within a, a Parkinson's group, then of course you also have the shared experience, and um, we see that with uh, the MS research we're doing at the moment, the MS study, the study about the uh, frame runners. Uh, we really see that there's also this whole social aspect of having a coffee afterwards and then chatting and catching up. And that's such an important part of these sessions of why people enjoy coming, I think. And of course, last time I put in bold, <laughs> slowing down of the disease progression. When I first, because after I did my PC and I teach, uh, I teach people in sports science and we have a course on exercise prescription for rehabilitation. And every year I do a bit about Parkinson's. And I've been looking a lot into exercise over the years, every few years, I update that and look at the, yeah, the reason I was really surprised in the first instance to see how strong that effect is of exercise on Parkinson's. I hadn't really expected that so directly. And um, now this is the only technical slide with lots of difficult words. It's not really my area either, but uh, so just to show that there's, there is an idea. We don't, we don't really understand 
fully how exercise helps, but we know it's good for uh, it, the neurons, it helps the growth of the, you know, the connections between neurons, it helps blood flow, uh, and it helps with uh, neurotrophic effects, so that they, uh, I'm sure Tilo knows much better than I do, but the proteins, I believe, the, mo the biomolecules that make it all function well. <laughs> there is lots of effects in exercise has that, that are benefit. that just gives you a really healthy brain, healthy brain, and that really helps. Um, yeah, so this is like a model. Uh, so, like I said, we don't fully understand how it works, but we know that it does work and have some ideas of how it might might help. There's lots of research on exercise and also lots of limitations to it. They're all so varied. Specifically, they all look at different types of classes. Uh, there is typically they have a control group. Um, the, you know, they're randomized controlled studies, most of them. So they have a control group that gets usual care, but of course it's not blinded like with medicine, for example. You know whether you're in the exercise group or not. Uh, or they, you know, they never really studied the dose of exercise, how much, and they rarely compare how much exercise is optimal. Um, so it's, it's such a huge variation between groups, and mostly, and it's important for. Okay, <laughs> it's a phone, I think. So then mostly uh, people with, with mild Parkinson's as well, or Parkinson's at least can do quite a lot of physical activities. So it's kind of, um, you know, that group is overrepresented within the research as well. And that's important for the frame running because that kind of said, you know, more, yeah, people who are less ambulant and don't have access to a lot of the, these activities who are not able to go on a dance um, activity, for example, they could still do the frame running. Um, yeah, so that's, so I just wanted to say for the research, I just I had samples for my students. I had lots of slides here with all these studies, <laughs> the meta-analyses. So meta-analyses are studies that look at all the, the, the they look at all the studies. So they study the studies that have been done. They study all these randomized controlled studies. So there's one, for example, dance that's taken together every study on dance with a control group. They did a proper study on, on uh, the effect of, of the dance exercise. And so that was one actually with fewer studies in it, only about five or so. Uh, and uh, this study on uh, Tai Chi, for example, or more general ones about aerobic exercise that have, of course, many more studies. And nowadays it's kind of the gold standard when the NHS wants to make policy decisions and they tend to go to these meta analyses, they're the kind of gold standard to look at to make decisions about. Uh, you know, what kind of therapies work. Um, there are so many studies out there that's now sort of a, a new way of doing things. And most of these, most of these so combined studies, because they look at several studies, have lots of participants because you combine all these studies together. So there's quite a lot of data there. And we do see improvements in, in strength, in balance, and some, some studies of the number of falls, for example, in gait. So, for example, the step length, the walking speed, improves cognition. Some studies that look at that. Uh, specifically, they find uh, improvement in cognition. Um, health related quality of life is in many studies, but not always. Sometimes it comes out as, yeah, we see a significant uh, benefit, but it's not always the case. It's a little bit more varied. Um, so, and one thing I'd say about this, so I already mentioned, it's if you look at these studies, it, people with milder uh, Parkinson symptoms are overrepresented in that. And another issue is the fear of falling is a barrier to engage, which is you know, the same point really related. Uh, it, it's a barrier to engaging in exercise uh, for ambulatory individuals with Parkinson's. And of course, there are people who are not ambulatory, who cannot walk. So for them, it's already in a this, this this barrier of to participate in a lot of these activities. So of course, one of the things in these studies is that you tend to recruit whoever you know, would like to be in the study, they get the word out, get as many people involved. And of course, it's those people that are, that may be already active and that like to join in that, uh, that do these studies. And so we try to, you know, reach uh, other groups as well. And that's where frame running comes in. So we saw a few people look downstairs already at the bike. And uh, so they said, well, what on earth, how does that work? Uh, so the idea is that it's, it's for running, it's not a bicycle, we call it a running bike. So the word bike is a little bit misleading. First of all, it's a trike, isn't it? It's three wheels, uh, but there are no pedals. So that's one of the main characteristics. You sit on a saddle, you have handlebars, but there are no pedals that you have to uh, move around. So you don't have to have the kind of good coordination to do that. And the cool thing here is that you can use 
a hundred different techniques to, to push yourself forward. As long as you, the little, the Swedish leaflet where they promote it, they say, so if, you, if you can move your feet, you can do frame running. So any kind of pattern would work. You push with two feet, for example, or you want to run with one leg. If one leg isn't working so well, the other one is better. You can do that. So you can, um, you know, we can lots, lots of different techniques. Some people use a kind of galloping kind of pattern, uh, or you can just do something like a running pattern. Like I see some people sort of swing their legs and then hit the ground, or just push more back. You can do it as you know, as long as you you find a way that's comfortable for you, that works for you. That's you know, that's that's the solution. So that's quite useful. That is really useful for people with neurological disorders, in particular. That you can have these, um, you know, you can you can yeah, you can find a pattern that works for you. Basically, um, another feature that you can drop the, this is the same as bike here, you can drop the saddle down. Way, so you can drop it down for people to so get up here and then you can lift the saddle up again and then you can get into place. Uh, and that way, you know, it's quite easy to get onto the bike. And there's this support, the chest support, which provides that stability. And this is just a very small version of it, but actually there are also versions with a large felt for a band which goes around the, the, the individual. So it can be, you can be incredibly secure on the bike. Um, the other, so yeah, the, the bike's already set up to go straight. It really wants to go straight. You have to, if you want to turn, you have to make a bit of an effort. To do that, so we see with young people, the, the sport is particularly popular amongst people with cerebral palsy. That now, because it's been around for a while, we now have a lot of adults with cerebral palsy using it. They're now uh, they've gone to uni, they've been writing about it, blogging about it, they're spreading the word, <laughs> and it's you know it's really because for them, you know, when you're growing up, you've never had experience running, you don't know what if you see other kids run and. Uh, Hannah Dines has a blog on this, which is absolutely amazing. She writes about sort of dreaming what that would be like, and then she discovered frame running, and she's like, oh, this is, you know, this is, you really get goosebumps when you read that. She experienced what it was like to run. Um, yeah, so they, they, it's popular among that group, but this varies for people who, who do frame running. There's lots of different, uh, there's kids with muscular dystrophy, you know, people who have uh, an amputation of one leg or both the knee, then you know, anybody who, who struggles with balance can use the bike, it might, it might benefit them. Um, and we're doing a, yeah, a study at the moment uh, into in MS and frame running. And here's an example, I just want to show you somebody on the bike actually. So this is a, a lady in Edinburgh, this is Edinburgh Meadowbank, very, you can see the gloomy Scottish sweater. <laughs> um, it's a very, uh, so it's uh, you can see she uh, she has her own pattern. She has very high specificity in her limbs. She has several poles in. Uh, so she has she uses a power wheelchair normally, an active wheelchair. She cannot stand, so let alone you know walking. Uh, she she's never be able to walk. But when she gets onto the bike, she finds her own way of of moving, and she you know she manages things. So she has this very strong resistance to this. You try to stretch your muscle. Try to extend the leg, it sort of catches immediately. Is what the, what the neurologist would call it, the physio. So you have this immediate sort of catch. It, it sort of, yeah, it resists movement. But she found a, a way of sort of taking small steps. She's running, she's exercising, she's moving. Um, so, yeah, so that's, she does this. So yeah, she goes to the meadows where the meadow, meadow bank closed. She's, she's now gone by the meadows. And now maybe she's back again on the meadow bank. Now it's open, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so you see what it what it's like. So everyone finds their own way of moving. I thought I'd take a tiny little detour uh, into coordination. Why sort of the, this works for people who are uh, who might be using music. because we have people arriving and say, "Oh, I won't be able to do this." And then they half an hour later, they're actually like, "Oh, this is where can I get one of those bikes?" You know. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah, that's it's kind of it's cool to see that, of course. Uh, so if we think about the human neuromotor system, we have uh, about, well, about 300, go to the order of magnitude, 10%, about 300 and 360, right? so the, the muscles is more, is higher, over 600 muscles, and then we have, of course, a number of cells in our nervous system, the, the you know, neurons that can be on off. We have about a huge amount that, I'm not sure how you pronounce, 10 to the 14th in a different way. So we've got all these little factors that we can Coordinate differently. So moving, moving your body, the whole body it involves, you know, coordinating all these different parts. And being interested in 
in motor control, I find that quite a fascinating problem, a difficult one. Uh, so the key issue is that there's a redundant number. We've got too many degrees of freedom and more than we need for any one specific task. So of course we have a right, you know, I put in the sense how we build, but it's, you know, we need to be built in order to be able to catch the bus or write a letter or uh, climb on a ladder if we don't have to do that. So we were built for all these different tasks and some of us uh, trained to be fun to do ballet, others are weightlifters. So we're kind of, you know, we have this old practice design, unlike most of the animals in nature, and robots are always built for one particular function. And if you think about it, um, well, so Nikolai Bernstein, a Russian neurophysiologist, he's sort of kind of seen as the founder of modern mo in movement science, he's seen as an important person. And he said, the problem of coordination is the problem of reducing the degrees of freedom of the movement system. So you need to figure that out. And children figure that out, lots of trial and error, lots of practice when they're learning to walk. Uh, but initially, when people learn new skills, young kids do that and adults do that. They tend to freeze out a lot of degrees of freedom. A lot of these, these factors of, you know, the degrees of the your elbow has the degrees of the arc, your shoulder has more, it can move in more ways. And but it's a difficult one to figure out how to coordinate those different parts of the body. And we know that already in the 90s when computers were not that impressive, we were able to beat uh, the, the best human in the world in chess, but we still are struggling with, with um, robots that move like people do. And there are some examples that are pretty impressive, but still, you know, if you see Asimo, it sort of walks very carefully up the stairs and it can have a kick a ball. So they're showing that off like, oh, it can, it can play football, but I don't think you'll be selected by any you team anytime soon. So it's still very, you know, the, have, building a robot that has the dexterity of a five-year-old is still somewhat away. It's still a huge, huge problem. The flexibility, especially when you see him say, look, it's, it's an incredibly smooth surface. What if it was a bit bumpy? You know, as soon as that happens, it, the computer robots struggle with that. So what we tend to do when we learn a skill, we try to, we figure it out. Uh, young children do this, probably, probably you think about it, it's a really impressive skill. So they, uh, they tend to just, you know, you, you don't use all your joints, you start off with, with just the hip, for example, and then, you know, he's going to balance and using his shoulders, so because he doesn't turn his whole body, he doesn't use his knee much, he just kicks it like that. If you begin with tennis, you might use your shoulder more than those more um, difficult joints. And so you see this kind of happening, but also when instructors are instructing a skill with learning to dive, for example, swimming dive, you start, isn't it, kids sitting on the side of the pool, and so you, you take away all the degrees, the, the whole problem of the lower half of your body is taken away, you can just focus on using the upper half, and that's kind of what we're doing, of course, in, in frame running. It's, it's the same idea that you you make you take away a lot of these degrees of freedom, you put them on the bike, and suddenly the control problem becomes so much easier. I mean, you can, yeah, you could see that without too much theory. It, it makes perfect sense. Um, I want to show you a bit of research. Some studies are more high quality than others. We've done some small studies. There isn't a whole lot out there in frame running. So uh, I just wanted to give you an indication. Uh, so we're in Scotland, and in our Scottish frame running research group, we have three different lines, friends of research. And some of that has been focused more in the elites, so I don't want to talk too much about that, I'll be brief. And then I want to talk mostly about the benefits of participation. Uh, so what we've been doing, we've been doing research to work out what the classes should be for competition for these, uh, these athletes that train really hard uh, four or five times a week and do strength training and want to be want to excel in this and want to be at the Paralympics. So it's telling Tilo, it's, unfortunately, it's not been chosen for this Paralympics, but we expect it to be in the next one. It's, it's in World Paralympics now, so it's really cool to see on TV and, and see for all you know, the, you know, the, the, the high quality, uh, yeah, international competitions. In, uh, it is the first competition in Berlin, the European one, and then in Doha, uh, the World Championships. So we're seeing this at now elite level. And this is the same way we saw the video before, and we analyzed the movements with 3D movement analysis with the cameras. Because to work out classes, you need to know what is the impact of particular impairment on the performance. You need to work out what their limitation is to then decide what the classes is. So just like you have weight classes in, in boxing, you need classes in frame running competition to keep it fair. You don't want the person with the least, uh, the, least the, the lowest impairment to win. You want, you know, you want fair classes. Um, so, relative to other 
other sports at Paralympics. These are people in much higher support needs. And so the, they are quite keen on improving them. Uh, in the future, we've also been looking at sort of the, the training. Is it safe? Is it okay to train really hard? They train with people with CP, with more um, severe uh, cerebral palsy. They haven't really been studied because they haven't been able to do that. They couldn't get on the treadmill. So now with the running bike, we can study how they respond to, to exercise for training. Uh, there used to be some myths going around that you can't strengthen those, those fast muscles and that they would be also they would have very high lactic levels. But a lot of that had to do with inactivity we found. We found that trained people, they respond pretty much the same as people without cerebral palsy, and it is pretty safe for them to, to run around. So this is an equipment that we can analyze how much oxygen they use when they're out there running uh, on the move and with the benefits of participation. That's what I want to say a little bit more about. Um, and the potential benefits, of course, in three areas of expect we've done aerobic activity, you know, you're running around, uh, physical fitness, uh, which um, you would hope that does that, increased cardiovascular fitness if you're using your heart and lungs, motor function, uh, also the gait because you are running and you're strengthening those muscles and uh, possibly, you know, we hope to see some improvements in motor function and then the psychosocial well-being, you know, all that other important aspect. Um, so that's what we've been looking at. This is one small study we did early on, where we looked at the training session with eight participants, with a student, it was a student project basically. The student uh, looked at these people's heart rate, so we put heart rate monitors on them for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on, you know, some people training for longer than others. Uh, one participant came to the session but said, I'm, I'm really, I'm not so well, so he was taking it easy, so it wasn't included in the analysis. But the others all trained at a pretty high intensity. Uh, if we look at the literature, there's, there's different advice in different places. So we kind of some of the 50s and 60s, and we went at some of the, you know, the sources of like American uh, College of Sports Medicine is kind of a recognized source of where you get the advice from, and they give specific advice for people with disabilities. And, uh, so we, we looked at whether people train above that level. And interestingly, we knew from another study in, in Holland, Van uh, Petra Van Schie and colleagues, they looked at frame runner versus a wheelchair, and it's much harder in a wheelchair to get your heart rate up. Anytime, you know, using your arms for exercise, it's hard to get your heart rate. If you're using your legs, it's much easier. And so we saw that here as well, that was confirmed in this, that we saw this heart rate, uh, you know, most of the time, at least half the session above that level that you would expect a benefit. So if you do that twice a week, you do that over a week, you'd expect people to get fitter. Uh, so they were meeting that uh, that requirement. Um, we, a, a group in Sweden that recently, it's, 20, it's all very recent because it's such a new sport, uh, have looked at a group of, of 15 young adults uh, with cerebral palsy. So again, it's not quite, it's not, it's a different group, but it shows that, you know, running on that bike and the proof that they're standard, they're able to run uh, much further in the same amount of time after the 12 week training. Um, and they, they analyzed their muscles, their muscles had gone, or they had growth, they had grown their muscles. Um, and then we looked at the group in Scotland together with Holland and with Sweden. We recruited 115 participants, it's quite a lot because there are not that many people around the world. There's always pockets, small pockets of small groups of people in lots of different places doing train running. And we had a look at what these people, uh, how they reported, how they perceived the benefits. Of course, you still need to check that with actual testing and assessment, but it gives them some indication, gives us a hypothesis for further research. First of all, in order for, to know whether people keep doing the frame running, you know, enjoyment is such key, and when if it's not included, it's, it, was, it was such an important variable. So, but yeah, it requires, yes, always people report it the most. You might think it's stuck with the weather, you might not always be so, be so happy out there on these tracks that are usually very open, but no, people seem to enjoy it a lot. Has frame running made you more confident in what you can do? People also are really positive about their, their, the confidence that they get from the, the experience. Have you made friends through frame running as well? It might, not everybody might train in a group, so uh, I guess there might be some exceptions, but it's generally all on that positive side. Uh, and then we have a few things that we ask people that have trained running at least three months, which was by far most of, I think it was 110 out of the 115 people had been frame running for at least three months. And we asked them, how do you feel your exercises if you do them? So for a few people, was that applicable? If you do exercises, that have they gotten easier or not? Have they got 
more difficult things you can create running. Because there's some ideas that maybe your muscles get stiff because of the frame running, but all these kind of things are more myths. You see that people do find it easier uh, to do their exercise. They report that at least. Again, we should check this, of course. And there's two questions about walking. There's so much focus on walking, of course, in general, is such an important scalability in daily life. And transfer means, you know, wheelchair, for example. How, you know, how I feel my ability to walk has become a bit better was the most popular option there. So people feel that it has has helped them. Um, and then the last one compared with when I started frame running, I now, you know, I can walk a bit longer, a bit further is what people reported. Um, so it was a bit, there were more, many more questions. This is a selection of questions from that survey. Um, and also, we also asked them about the injuries, and there were four athletes out of all of those athletes who had an injury uh, that prevented them from a frame running for the next four weeks. Um, but yeah, so in general, it's a very safe activity, um, and we felt, you know, it's a safe activity with potential to improve physical fitness, functional ability, self-confidence, but we do need to, to do further research to confirm that, of course. I have a PhD student that who did, they were focused completely on the psychosocial side, so not about the physical side. Uh, he's just finished, he submitted his, um, his PhD, started this year, he just finished about a year ago. And uh, yeah, he did three different studies, one some with young kids intervention, but the last study he did, the third one was interviews, um, well, by the use survey method, but that was mostly because communication is often difficult. People with CP, so they could take their time completing the questions and uh, giving some in-depth responses. And he got, I'm just going to show you a couple of quotes because I think they're really strong. And we talked about after when he had all this data, freedom was something that came up a lot that people felt like, I've got this data, but I could be on this bike and just walk on my own. I don't need other people to, you know, to help and, to, and I don't need to constantly have all that support. So that was something, so a lot about how how it made them feel better. So these were um, not just people with cerebral palsy, it was people who, um, just like the previous study, who take part in frame running. So it's a bit of a mixed group. Yeah, so people talked about how it improved their mood. Um, but yes, yeah, to mention social aspect, how it clears their head. It's very important for my well-being. Uh, this person, I enjoy the feeling when, when you're running, it feels like time stops. You're the only person in the world that just, can go around the track and you know do this activity and focus on the uh yeah getting these endorphins i suppose to make them feel better um yeah so people are generally are very positive about what it does for their for their mood it, it, the first person it helps with my anxiety in daily life um so yeah um other things we mentioned about sleep and appetite is on the side sort of smaller and people talked about how they felt improved their health as well, but I'm not really focused on those. But these are some really, I found some really fascinating observations. So about their attitude, the person here, the second person I like more but can do attitudes, give me a belief in my future independence. I now believe I can live independently in the future. So these were people that are sort of around 20 years of age and they've grown up with this idea that I can't do most of the other things that other people do, I can't do them. And it gives them such a different view of their own of their own independence, their own future. So it's had a massive impact for, for some of the people. Um, I feel free just like everyone else. Uh, they say frame, I'm not com not confined to my wheelchair, don't need to worry about falling over. Frame running is my escape. There's this with them So this is really strong. But again it's a different group of people. So we need to see how it how other people experience um, frame running. So just the last um, let me see. Yeah, the last thing about the MS study, so that's just, we're still running that study, or it's run by Queen, um, Queen Margaret University, uh, and it's a training center. Well, this, and we kind of are showing you a little bit about it because it's a study we would like to see replicated with people with uh, Parkinson's, see, see to find out the feasibility, find out what are the specific issues for people with Parkinson's, what works, what doesn't, what can we do to support them. We've already found the MS, they're very specific to like a food drop. Was that they have a different position on the bike, they, they need a little movement blocks to get onto because they sit higher onto the bike, but we, you know, you figure it out as you go along. So this was a study uh, led by qualified athletics coaches with specific experience in frame running. Um, and eight people tried frame running, initially they had a questionnaire beforehand, and they were part of the 20 interest. 
of course, when, you know, when you actually put in place, some people might not work at the time, etc. One decided it wasn't for them. Six people joined the whole study, lots of measurements, lots of acti activity measurements and other measurements, uh, blood pressure, etc. measured several times. One did not commit to study, but did keep coming to the sessions. And this is one key thing when we talk about it here, I'm so enjoying all keen to continue, all people keep continuing with frame running. Um, and so the feasibility, what we've so again, it's a bit of a slightly different age group, 48, 67, but all of them that you think group fits in there, that's, these are uh, adults towards the, not many older adults in there. Um, so the range from ambulant, non-ambulant to walking one stage, so nobody who just walks without uh, walking aids. So no adverse effects, but they do experience a lot of fatigue, but they get very fatigued throughout over the course of the session, which you don't really see as much with the young people with cerebral palsy. But they recover after, it's not something that's a major issue. Um, and the attendance has been pretty good, so they were asked for at least once a week, it's a 12-week study, so not everybody make that, but some people make almost twice every week. So there's quite a bit of variation. So the final, final, uh, yeah, they all improved when they tested them again, so their fitness has improved. And they all noted subjectively, again, we need to confirm that improvement in their walking ability or abilities, activities around the house. And the very last thing, so uh, one of the people with MS, Helen, talked about this first, the first time she was felt both negative. And who, me, she said, no longer able to run the walk on anything without falling or engaging in any sport. You can see that she couldn't do any sport, and there she was running around the proper athletic track. Well, we, amazing, she says. So she's been doing this, she's got her own frame, and then, um, yeah, she's been training, training to get to do, uh, to do 5K, and she's now wanting to do much longer distances, and it's really helped her. She loves being outdoors, and for her mental health, she feels it helps. So if you have any advice, you should try it. It's an adaptive activity, you might find, like me, that it's a life changer. Um, that is Helen's perception, and I had to mention, judgment. My colleague said, there's any people out there working with people with MS as well, maybe the clinician, you know, keep the, you know, get the word out if you know anyone. They're still recruiting for training session in early 2022, but we hopefully will also, there will be some all ability sessions and uh, hopefully we we'll get something set up for people with Parkinson's, a similar sort of group, yeah? So I think, yeah, this is the plan for Parkinson's. So I'd like to send up a come and try event in the future, so between now and the summer, Basically, we're going to do both of the survey and a common try. So, survey, so if there's an interest, uh, get an interest in these regular settings from the common try as well, the feedback, if people feel this is something they'd like to engage in. And then hopefully, we'll get some funding for a project in Edinburgh um, with, with the part of both for the community to be involved in that whole process in the application as well to look at whether this is something that's feasible to do what kind of effects do we see if there are any, any adverse effects and is there any indication of the kind of benefits. Of course, if you, you know, we have to, then again, the bigger studies need to confirm those benefits, but you can get a good indication from these small scale studies of what are the kind of things that people report um, and what are the kind of things we can measure that seem to improve in at least some of the individuals. Um, and that's, that's that, that's me. And then I just have a little, this is a one minute clip from the camp in, in, um, in Denmark <clears throat> every year, about 100 people there that made their own way there, they made their own way, they kept there with their, with their bikes and they have a, have a blast with <laughs> all, the, all the, you know, you can see it boosts their, uh, yeah, their confidence, etc. And it's all, you know, from, there's are from very young kids with tiny little bikes to the adults. Um, and that was the end. Sorry, I think I'm having a little bit. Um, all right, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, thank you. Yeah, How much would it cost to, to set That's up a program for to set up the program? program. I, oh, I don't know exactly. No, but I, Give um, us a ballpark idea. Oh, well, the bikes. Well, we have bikes already in these loadings. That's one thing that so it's mainly it's not that relatively as therapies go. It's not that expensive. So I know there's a the coach. We pay the coach weekly renting the space there. Uh, and I've heard that like Meadow Bank is, is double the, the cost of East Lothian, but I don't know what it is exactly. Sorry? I'm just going to buy price for Meadow Bank. The, there at the moment, this bike comes from Meadow Hill, from Trenet, yeah. 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 And there's all so the it's, it's gradually, um, it's gradually increasing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, and, uh, but they're mainly used by youngsters. Yes. Yeah. There's, 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 there's two groups. There's young, there's kids, and there's different size bikes from the little ones. So this is the extra large adult one, and brought it because it wasn't being used. Um, because of course, today is a session Saturday, they're doing their frame running. Uh, but in fact, to you know, have a sit, see what it's like. Um, so, but yeah, what we yeah, we've gradually been adding one at a time, and if it's somewhere if you get more people that would like to use the bikes, that there are bikes at home, there are not that many other bikes. The bikes are about uh, so they used to be about 1,500 in my head, but at last I heard it's more like 2,000, and it depends what kind of uh, oh no, 58, I can say that right. Uh, no, they might make one of it, isn't it? It's 15. There's so much competition between uh, athletic clubs themselves now where they don't have use of the um, And you've got to sort of fit the time to more or less between five and seven uh, to, to do that. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, there's all those the practicalities of that making that work. but. Uh, uh, so, Martin, yeah, the bikes that you used for the MS study, where did they come from? Uh, from various, well, there's some, there's some sort of, uh, often people acquire a bike through crowdfunding, but this was from in the grant, there was, I think they asked for a few of the bikes, uh, the whole grant is 50,000. 50. That was 50,000, and that was with, uh, there's a research, postdoc researcher, a collective data, there's uh, the, the coach, there's the, yeah, the space, and uh some equipment but uh, yeah because maybe you know, yeah so there's and did the ms society contribute that it will pay, pay the, the ms society yeah they 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 funded that study so um yeah so as, as therapists go i mean that you know it, it depends on where you're comparing yeah, I'd, I'd be i'd be uh, very surprised if there weren't local interest for, for, for people with more advanced parkinson's in, in participating in a, in, a, in a study like that i mean what do people think so, go, go to one side, I'm first. I'm just going to address it. Um, I suppose it fits in quite nicely because a weight bearing exercise is also sort of cardiovascular. Yeah, yeah. And you're not going to fall. And I think the purpose was to get a bit older. That's actually a very unusual. Yeah, well, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. You tend to then do more seated, isn't it? You tend yeah. to then yeah. become yeah. less active. So, it, it allows. And actually, they've done in the, in the south of England, uh, Liz Bryant has done some, some measurement of, of bone density. So she found, nice. yeah, she found some improvements, but it's, yeah, that was a small scale study. The equipment wasn't the gold standard. So, she's been looking through a bigger study and get funding to, to really measure. But, yeah, she's yeah. Excellent measure, actually. Yes, yeah, I think it's an ultrasound way of, yeah. And just because a comment on the price of the bike, it's a special set of equipment. If you look at how much people are spending on road bikes, for example, these days, yeah, yeah. that's anything from what, £2,000 to £5,000. So that, to me, doesn't seem like bad value for money at all. Yeah, there are different, uh, yeah, there are different bikes. Yeah, there's some different bikes. There's some that used to be a company in England, but they don't trade anything, so it's all a bit complicated. This is an American. <laughs> Uh, company, but it's made in Taiwan. I mean, it's all, you know, it's a, it's a rad bike, R and D. So this, the gold standard is the 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 one from Denmark, but obviously Denmark is one of those places they don't do anything uh, else with it. For example, in in, uh, in South America, they make their own ones, but and in Portugal, the Portuguese group has international competition. You suddenly we see the bikes and appear, but they had, for example, their metal went all the way around and to step in if they had to. Lift the bike up every time and get somebody to step. So, you yeah, know, not all the bikes are the same kind of quality. We feel this is a really, yeah, this is a solid good bike. And they make, of course, for the elite performance now, you get, they want more lightweight, but this is just made for stability, for it's the steering that's uh, to be able to go around the track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, the um, first time I've seen any of this stuff, so no questions, is it? Um, no, no, that's all fair. <laughs> but basically, um, the thing that struck me was that I slowly but surely given up my favourite exercise, which was uh, jogging. And the reason was exactly as you said, because I kept falling over. That was happening more frequently than yeah. yeah. So 
And is, is there going to be some kind of open program here for people like myself? Well, uh, well, one of the things is as well that we've been hoping, we've just been thinking about it over the past week to get a model from uh, from Holland where they just they design one that folds, so you could just put it back in the car and it's much more, much easier to take it home and to have it at home. And that's quite a new thing. And so that would be one of those things that we'd like people to try it out to see if they want to purchase one maybe like that. Uh, so this one, it goes in the back of the car, but you have to just, you know, back seat down and everything. But you can take the wheels off, but it's still a bit, <laughs> it's a bit, uh, bit big. So yeah. Yeah, what's needed is sort of the Brompton equivalent of that, isn't it? The one that you can fold up and put yeah, it in the back of the car. Yeah, you can really just stay. Yeah. But it would be good to have a schedule where people can share and use, uh, you know, maybe around the meadows or something. Like, or near, you know, near the uh, Portobello, then you take that out on the other one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was my running track. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's the kind of idea. Yeah, it's all kind of nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just stuck with the starting, so we got this time. Which um, elite people take to extreme when they're young uh, are more vulnerable to the generation of in the UK, you know, from running a hundred mile a week over so many years. And uh, then um, and at what stage um, should we be doing research on um, excessive exercise? I mean, the sad death of God is here. Um, you know, showing what uh, level it has there. Would, would it more exercise um, yeah. lead to a higher possibility of heart parking? Well, it's, uh, yeah, I think that, well, I'm not sure. I think that's specific types of. I, I think you're talking about this very different form of activity there, um, uh, Henry. You know, you know, Contact rugby, people yeah, bashing yeah, their heads. Um, I, I don't think that, yeah, 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 yeah. have a lot of things to worry about, but I don't think that's that's really one of them. No, I um, think he was just really saying that, you know, is, it a, is, is that potential cause in the same, you know, in some vein, like with uh, contact sports or something like that? So it's a, it's a totally separate question. One thing I was going to ask was, would you then have would you be able to accompany the person using it with somebody who had, um, you know, like uh, a steer on the physiological needs and uh, some kind of physiotherapy? Well, we, that's a, that's a really good question. I mentioned most of the most of the groups around Scotland where it's now right? they either they either have a, a, a physio with a coach working together because yeah. it's often like an emergency coach who didn't really know anything about neurological condition they yeah. learned. And, and then the physio who looks at sort of whether the movement patterns are sort of over the long term problematic. And sometimes it's in a few places it's the physio that's kind of also the coach that, that is so excited, you know, that they, they love to drive this on the places. So they are a physio and a coach. Uh, I think the Berlin uh, very big group there. Yeah, yeah. Do you need yeah, you do you do need that combination, that insight. Yeah, and we have got yeah, and we have got that in Edinburgh. Um, um, and those caused by um, skewed proprioception where I thought my right foot was very important and did a nose dive. I wondered whether you, whether the research that has been done so far and looked at proprioception, whether that improves with the brain money. Uh, not directly, but I've been thinking a lot about because I remember Julie Stowe said if you want to train balance, you need to challenge balance and you need to sort of lean and do these exercises where you where you challenge yourself, just, you know, the, the kind of walking and, and you're, you're kind of taking that away here. So I realized that I wonder, I just don't know to what extent you, you there will be a transfer to walking, but it might be because you, you know, you do strengthen those leg muscles, you do, uh, we think in the, in the Young people, it's said, but you find really their trunk control is kind of tasks they do. But they, if we didn't think that would relate to their to their performance on the bike, but it does quite strongly. They, they might be their core, the way that they run on the bike with their hips. It might still, but, but in the end, it doesn't. You know, it takes that away, so you're not, you're not probably not practicing your proprioception so much with that. So it's more of a solution to be able to exercise 
uh, you know, without falling. But it, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. That's really interesting to to check because we could not answer. It's hard to have many exercise options, isn't it? Between like doing so, you have to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. This is yeah. Really, really really within, exactly. And you do exercise. You might, like we said, you might have sort of it. You might make it easier to do these other exercises at home. Uh, and say so. It might, yeah, it might help you. Yeah. As, as Gordon just said, I think this is a very small area. Where yeah. An exercise program it will meet the needs for some people, and, and but not. Yeah. It's not. A, you know, it's not a yeah. all around yeah. on exactly. Exactly. Option, exactly. But, it, but it, yeah. it, it has its place with it, without a doubt. Um, you know, it's not necessarily helping with balance or posture, um, but it will improve the cardiovascular output. And I think the most important thing, which came up in, at the end there, is the actual, um, that sense of freedom, that sense of being able to move without the restrictions of worrying about mm -hmm. falling and balance. Um, a real freedom to, to move in, in the way that your body feels it wants to move, which is very rarely available to people. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you're constantly concentrating on being upright and, and in the environment around you, and that's a very, very freeing experience. Which, which I think would give some really good positive benefits to a lot of people. Um, so, so I can see why that would have a really good place. Um, yeah, but yeah, that, that's in, true. In small programs, the way you talk about the program, I can see this as one of those, yeah, the activities where you go to structured activity as part of your weekly. You might do other, you know, on other days you do other activities. And, yeah, yeah. I can see, you know, people maybe would want to have their own and go off and do that on their own, but but to do this in a group would make yeah. so much more sense um, to to facilitate a, a group session. Yeah, but well, I guess that's again personal. Yeah, personal preference as well, isn't it? And what people uh, are looking for. Any more questions? I was interested. Do um, I'm wondering if that that posture is is that a good way to be? <laughs> um, I can't see. Um, that has that posture at all. Yeah, and now it's hindering it, or it's not hindering it, yeah, make it worse. Um, um, well, that, that's something to, yeah, to check. So that's something that with, yeah, with the people with CP, we, we try to, one of the things that they, we know, we have, we know some stuff, and also it's the individuals that are, that have been now competing at a really high level that started off dragging their feet all the time, and then, you know, and then physio. This tells me how you know you go around and hold the feet up, and they've got different as all tools to help with that. And then she she gradually she's now has got a really nice running pattern on the on the bike, but I don't know how that transfers to you know obviously she's a wheelchair user actually off off the bike, that point uh so her yeah the lower half of her legs aren't uh working very well off the when she doesn't have the ability to 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 walk. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a question that's not immediately addressed by this. Can you adjust the first point? So yeah, that's, that's very individual. That's actually that's one of those things. We have done a little study on how it what's you know for racing, what's the best that you think you know you can it's really very personal. Some people sit really upright, some people sit as well as they, and that's really personal to to the how their hip. Uh, yeah, but we have all people. So that's where you need an expert to set you up on the yeah. to get the right. Yeah, and also the yeah. Like a high because yeah. I did some yeah. testing with students and I said, what's the guidance? How what's the height of the bike? And they said, oh, because it's so different for every person that uh, so far, you know, you look at it, yeah, they all have their own setting of the bike. Yeah. yeah I was also wondering if um, exception helped much earlier on as well. Yeah. You were saying about, yeah, um, my left leg is sort of weaker than my right leg now. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, how do you do some of that? It might actually, yeah, it might have too. But it's symmetry maybe with the exercise being quite. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 um, we'll take one more question from, from Jane, and then what we'll do is, if anyone wants to stretch their legs or perhaps go for a little you know, loo, they can do that. But, but if you don't do that, we can continue asking Martin some more questions <laughs> until, uh, until we have uh, a second to start. So, Jane, last, last question before people get a chance to stretch their legs. I'm interested in like, commuting. Is, is, there kind of, is it possible to do that, or is it? I suppose maybe an answer that I just, I just, I just, just a, 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 you know, cycle paths. Does it have to be fairly flat, or is it 
Um, yeah, when prepare, I was just thinking about the preparing this, so it's one of the things in, I know one of the, the ladies that came across in, in Denmark, she, she, she commutes on it to work, but Denmark is, of course, very different from Edinburgh, and that would be quite flat, and yeah, this cycle would be quite smooth. And I know from one of the, the, the current world champion, he loves to do right set the park, so he'd be able to go on his own, which he would never be able to. And so, so it'd be kind of smooth, you know, in Edinburgh, I was just thinking, but these are also the tires, as I said, it's not quite set. The, the side of the road is usually the worst of it, isn't it? And the side, yes, the current side, the pilot side, I don't, I'm not sure if it's moved which way. It depends on your room test, I suppose. So mm -hmm. The meadows are quite, you know, the, 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 one of the things is in the hills, actually. One of the things that, if you're, of course, you don't have what you have on a bike with the gear change, you don't have that. So that, that's something that I think it would limit it very much in Edinburgh with the, yeah, with the, the, the height difference. It's, it's just impossible to fit a small electric motor on the yeah. front wheel. Yeah, yeah. 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 they respond to, you know, they respond to the, the, the yeah, right to just help a little bit. So it would mean that you get supporting work going uphill and, and yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's yeah. anything badly. Like that. Well, you see on the yeah. track often when a helper, you know, people, they lift a piece of oil and you, the formal profession is still still in there. Uh, but, um, what we'll do is, if anyone wants to stretch their legs or go to the loo, we'll have a, a, a five minute time to do that. And if anyone doesn't want to do that, I'm sure Martin will be able to answer long questions. So I'll ask you to go. Is it the rest of it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Right.